I want to talk to you just for a few moments on the songs of Christmas. The songs of Christmas. And I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Luke, the first chapter. I hope you brought your Bibles. Luke, the first chapter, verses 46 to 55. I'm going to ask that you stand with me. If you're able to stand as we read the Word of God, it is on the screen. Luke, the first chapter, verses 46 to 40, the 55, excuse me. And verse 46 says, And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away empty. He hath helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his, to his seed forever. Can you say amen? You can be seated. A couple Christmas songs that I just was looking at. The background of the songs that we sing. We're going to talk about two of them this morning before we get into the discourse of this word. The story behind O Little Town of Bethlehem. When Phillips, the well-loved preacher, was a boy, his parents had him and his brothers learn hymns. As he grew older, he loved to write hymns and poems himself, especially for children. He loved all children as a bachelor standing six foot six inches tall, not quite as tall as Glenn. He loved nothing more than romping with children, laughing at their stories, and sharing their smiles and tears. On Christmas Day in 1868, he decided to do something unusual for the children's Christmas program at his church so he could write his memories of Bethlehem where he had spent Christmas Eve three years before. The bishop started to write, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Twenty-four lines flowed from his inspired pen. And he gave the words to Mr. Redner, who was in the middle of the night, and who in the middle of the night before that Christmas service, woke up suddenly with a melody ringing like angels in his ears. He quickly jotted them down and filled in the harmony on the way, on the way to church in the morning. That same day, he taught the, children, the song to the children of Holy Trinity Church. Today, more than 150 years later, we have been singing this classic carol for all ages and different styles. Isn't that amazing? How God gave him the words, but the music director got the, the melody of the song. That's, that's great. I love that. And then there's another song, Joy to the World. Joy to the World was written by Isaac Watts in the early 1700s. While in his teens, Isaac became very dissatisfied with the pathetic psalms singing in the church. Here's an example of some of the words they sang. Ye monsters of the bubbling deep, your master's praises spout. Up from the sands ye doslings peep and wave your tails about. That's what they were singing. Isaac could often be heard complaining about senseless lyrics like these. His father got so tired of his complaining that he told him, Well, then, young man, why don't you give us something better to sing? So at the age of 18, Isaac Watts took up his father's challenge. For the next couple of years, Isaac Watts wrote a new hymn for each Sunday. He became a preacher poet, well loved by his congregation. More than 20 years later, while devoting himself to writing a collection of hymns based on King David's psalms, he came upon Psalm 98, which sang, which we sing, Joy to the World. Isn't that wonderful? I like to look at the history of things. So Mary 
said in verse 46, and you could put the scriptures back up on them because we're going to go through them real briefly, talking about the songs of Christmas. This song came about of her visiting her, probably her aunt or her cousin, Elizabeth. An amazing miracle happened. You've all read the story about what happened when Mary and Elizabeth encountered one another. And the background further is that Zacharias had said, God had said to Zacharias and Elizabeth that you're going to bear a son. And we know that man that was born as John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was the forerunner. So here Mary being pregnant goes to see her probably aunt who is six months pregnant. And what happened when they had that encounter was that she was filled with the Holy Spirit and she said this to Mary. Blessed is she who has believed. I want you to get that. Blessed is she who has believed in what God said. And I saw this on Facebook. I don't know who put it on there, but this was just so part of this season. The first person to greet Jesus in the womb of Mary was the baby that was in Elizabeth's womb when she heard the voice of Mary coming into the house. It says that the baby leaped up within her and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. The baby, the prophet John the Baptist, was acknowledging and praising the Messiah and the Lord Jesus. Isn't that amazing? She was filled with the Spirit, and she began to prophesy. Well, this whole song, this is called the Song of Mary. And in the Latin, it's called, and I'm not very good with words, this is called, this is called Mary the, Mag the Magnacant. The Magnacant. Her song is called the Magnacant or the Magnificent. So this song that she's singing, it's literally because of the Holy Spirit coming upon her. And so let's look at this for just a couple moments. Verse 46, my soul magnifies the Lord. What she is saying there is, I am declaring the greatness of God. The Spirit of God in you wants to declare the magnificence of God if you will let it go forth. Are you hearing me? That is what the prophetic word... Mary was prophesying this song that came from her heart of everything that was told her, everything that she believed, everything that just happened with her aunt of being filled with the Spirit and prophesying, blessed is she who has believed. And the baby leaped up within her and they were filled with the Spirit. My goodness, this is amazing. And so Mary says, my soul Everything within me is declaring the greatness of God. That's what the prophetic word does in us when we will receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 47, my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. She's carrying her Savior in her belly. She's carrying the world's Savior. She's carrying. And let me tell you, the book of Revelation, that the spirit, the spirit of prophecy is the spirit of Jesus and so Jesus was prophesying through his mother as a baby, being filled with the Spirit. My mind can't hardly get around this. She says, my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. That's what God wants us in our worship, that we are rejoicing because he is our Savior. And she, she was carrying the Savior. And I want to say this to you. In the book of Romans, it talks about this. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same Holy Spirit that's living in you today. The same Spirit that prophesied through Mary of the greatness of God and that my Spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. That same Spirit, my brothers and sisters, you need to hear this, that same Spirit living in you. It just needs to be turned loose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> They just need to be turned loose and believed. Hallelujah. 
she takes the place of humility and look what she says. And she, he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. She has looked upon me. Who am I but just a little Jewish girl that God chose me to carry the Messiah? God has looked down. And I want to say this to all of us. God has looked down upon all of us and would raise us up. He would raise us up from wherever our state and life has been because of he who lives inside of us. The Savior, the Master, the Lord, the King, the Magnificent One. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? Verse 48, And henceforth all generations will call me blessed. What basically Mary is saying is that God has seen my position in life and has brought me up in him. He's the one that has given birth. He has allowed me to give birth to my Savior and the Savior of the world. God is the one that has lifted me up. And I want to say this to you. God is the one that will lift every one of us up if we'll just believe and come to him. So many times we try to make it on our own. So many times we won't go to the Lord with our problems. We won't go to the Lord with, with depression or fear or discouragement or wondering about the future. What does the future hold? Well, I tell you, the future is glorious. Hear me this morning. The future is glorious because we are in Christ and Christ is in us. Paul said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. But Mary says, all generations prophesying to the future, all generations are going to look back and they're going to say, that woman that God chose to carry our Lord and Savior Jesus, she's blessed and we're blessed. See, it's an example to us. Verse 49, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. My brothers and sisters, not only did Mary say this in a song, singing it back to the Lord, and it, prop and it is uh, written down for us, but I want to tell you something. If you'll look back, you'll see that God has done mighty things in you. God has done mighty things in you. He has answered prayer. He has sustained you. He's allowed you to live another year. He has sustained you. He has kept you. He's fed you. He's clothed you. He has done it. And we are not the same as when we started 2018 as we're closing in on this year. We are not the same because of the grace and the glory of God working in your life. He says he is mighty. He has done great things for me and holy is his name. Holy is his name. Hallelujah. Can you say that with me? Holy is his name. Let's say it again. Holy is his name. Say it again. Holy is his name. And look what it says in verse 50. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He's the God that does not change. He is the same, the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same. And the Bible says that His mercy on those who have a reverence, see the word fear, it's not a tormenting fear, it's a reverence fear. A reverence. You know, if you ever want to do something bad, think about, ask yourself this question, do you have a reverence for God? not to insult him or to dishonor him and it'll make you say I'm not going to say that I'm not going to do it because that would bring dishonor to his name who I carry hello the reverence of the Lord and he shows it upon generation to generation you can look back he's speaking to Israel he's speaking to us look what he says in verse 51 he has shown strength with his arm God's strength. It is God's strength that has allowed me to carry this child. And I want to say this to every one of you. It is God's strength that allows you to keep going. It's God's strength that's going to allow you to get up in the morning, fight the traffic, go to work, have to overcome situations with people and just pressure situations because we are living. The pressure in 2018 has wrapped itself higher and higher. There's more pressure. More pressure, more warfare, more strain, more things in the spirit of this age. 
But guess what? We are the righteous. We are the ones that he has given. Look what it says there in verse 51. He has shown strength with his arm. He has shown strength with his arm. And let me just tell you about where the days that we live, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. I want to say this to you. Don't ever think that wicked people are going to win. Don't ever think that they have the advantage. Don't ever think that they'll never get caught. King David thought that too. Wow, look at them. They just live and they have all kinds of money and nothing seems to bother them. God says, don't worry about it. If they don't turn to me, they're going to stand before me as judge. He has scattered the proud and the imagination of their hearts. God deals with sin. God deals with the proud. God has a judgment. And some of those judgments happen before people hit the grave. I don't mean to scare you. I'm just telling you the reality of the very holiness and the nature of God. Look what it says in verse 52. He has put down the mighty from their thrones. God will deal with every nation, every government, everything that people think is secret and they'll never fail. God says he'll deal with those thrones. And look what it says there in that verse. And he has exalted the lowly. See, God keeps the books. And he knows your heart and he knows your life. And he sees you when you're away from everybody else, he knows, he sees, he exalts the lowly. He brings the humble people up, the people that have been tossed aside, the people that have been marginalized. It says, he exalts the lowly. You see this song coming from a, she calls herself the handmaiden of the Lord, just a place of humility. The Bible says that God exalts, God exalts the humble, but he brings down those who are full of pride. In fact, it says he resists the proud and exalts the lowly, the humble. So, I don't have to defend myself in life. I don't have to go and try to make myself to be something I'm not. Neither do you. Just walk with God. You are who you are. God exalts us. God sees are you, are you believing this this morning? Look what it says in verse 53. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away empty. This is talking more than just physical food and clothing and all the things of this world. He has filled the hungry with the good things. And the rich he has sent away empty. Those of us who walk in a place of humility before God and dependence upon God and to walk with Jesus. We don't have all the answers every day. None of us do. But I know one thing. I'm going to keep myself not exalting myself, but keeping myself humble before him, depending upon him. God, it says that the rich has sent away empty. You see people with the bucks and the carriages and all the stuff. They're empty. But the humble before God are filled with, look at it, good things. God has good things to fill you up with. Quit thinking of just the natural. That's part of the, the answer to prayer and part of God's character, what he wants to do for his people. He has filled the hungry, those that are hungry, with good things. Is your heart hungry for the things of God more than the things of this world? you will be filled with good things. Because everything else is turning to dust and nothing else satisfies. Is it true, church, what Mary's saying? Is it true? The rich he has sent away, you're empty. But he has filled the hungry with the good things of the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 54, her attention in this prophetic song. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. God says, I remember. 
I remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I remember Israel when you were you wouldn't deal with sin and idolatry and turning to the sins of the nations. And I, I scattered you among the nations and I, uh, I remember my mercy. I remember my word to my father figure, patriarchs. I remember what I promised. Let me just tell you something this morning. God remembers his word for you. God, re- God remembers Israel. God remembers you. And that's why We're living in the end of days because Israel is a nation since 1948. How much longer do we have? Are you hearing me? How much longer do we have? It happened any time of Christ coming back for his own redeemed. The Bible says every person who has this hope in himself purifies himself even as he is pure. Mary is prophesying prophesying beyond her understanding this little girl carrying our Messiah. And she's even prophesying to the nation of Israel, God remembers the promises to the patriarchs. He has remembered. And look what the word he uses. And remembers of his mercy. I want to tell you, our God is a merciful God. He does not want to see anyone perishing Uh, and and go to hell. He doesn't want to see anyone perish and miss. God is merciful. I believe God will be speaking to you and speaking to you and speaking to you that Jesus is the way. Come to me. And we would be fools, and many have. I don't want Jesus Christ as my Savior. I don't want God's plan for my life. I will run my own life. And I'll just take my chances. I mean, you know, that's foolish. But God in his mercy. Listen, every one of you that names the name of Jesus are here because of his mercy today. He looked down upon you and he spoke and you responded. Verse 55, as he spoke to our father, to Abraham and his seed forever. Being filled with the Holy Spirit her example, her song of praise and prophetic declaration. Being filled with the Spirit releases you into a greater fruitfulness. Being filled with the Spirit allows you to speak forth what God's will is and then you can say, not only for your own life, but in the lives of others, thus says the Lord and God is going to meet what He said in His Word. He's going to do it. Every person, every child, every young person can declare their praises and and as we're filled with the Spirit, speaking forth words that God is going to honor and God's going to fulfill if we'll believe it. God is not a respecter of persons. It's not about what sex you are, how old you are, or whether you're just blessed and gifted or whatever. We've got to cast that all aside. God has this for all of his children to to fill us with the Spirit afresh and to declare the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. And God is going to do what he says through you. But it's also our song begins to be lifted up. And you could sense that this morning in our worship. I didn't want us to quit of just lifting Jesus up and lifting Jesus up to go to another level and declare the word of the Lord. Declare the blessings of God. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, stand with me. Turn this way. Turn around to these guys here. Turn this way. Stretch your hands out this way. Father, all the people that live in this direction, we speak salvation. We speak the the opening of their eyes in Jesus' name. God, we're claiming this city and this valley for the Lord Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Turn to this way. Lord, every, the people that live this way, God, we're just declaring they live in Wildemar and, and down to Temecula and all those areas. Lord, we just declare salvation now. Let this be the season that eyes are open to see the Lord Jesus in a fresh way. Salvation, salvation, restoration, turn this way. 
We're looking towards the lake and over the lake, over the mountains, Lord, and Orange County. We are declaring for Elsinore over the lake into Orange County that this will be the season that eyes are open and people will come to the knowledge of the Son of God and they will give themselves to you in the name of Jesus now. We believe it, Lord. We're claiming people's lives. Turn that way. I believe that's the south. God, we're believing that all the backsliders, all those who once walked with you, all the ones, Lord, that have known you in the past, that have walked away, Lord, we claim them now in Jesus' name. We are praying for our city. We are praying, God, for all the north there to, to uh, Corona and Cucamonga, and it just, just keep extending. God, we're just believing that salvation will come to those cities and those individuals now. In the name of Jesus, we are declaring it. We're believing it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Matt, would you get your guitar? Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We're almost done. Let's just, let's just stand here for a moment. If you would, or you can sit. I don't care. Just, you could just be in his presence this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Worship you, Jesus. Worship you, God. As we are in this special season, I pray if there's a sense of discouragement or depression over you, or fear, or maybe a sense of, I just don't get it, and I'm just kind of numb in my heart. I pray that you will rise up in faith today and you will declare to your soul, to you, even the words of Mary when she said, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. And behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. That you will say, for he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. That he has shown strength with his arm. And he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. And he has put down the mighty from their thrones and have exalted the lowly. I pray that you will take this scripture and say, it's mine. It's mine. And I'm coming up to another level. And I'm saying out of faith, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit in a fresh way. Fill me with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one who gives hope the Holy Spirit is the one that gives strength. The Holy Spirit will have you doing things that you would say, what in the world am I doing? And what am I saying? Because it's not you, but it is the Spirit of God who lives inside of you. Hallelujah. This is the season of the light and the glory. This is the season where we're not ashamed to say He is Lord and He is King. And the baby that is within the manger is the son of God and he is my king <laughs> yes he is my king this day so don't get caught up with what's under the tree don't get caught in what who has something and not me but realize what you have money can't buy God has surprises on him you must rely Amen. Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit now. Fill us, oh God. The same Spirit that came upon Elizabeth, came upon Mary, is the same Spirit that lives in us and will bubble forth out of us. And we will be encouraged and strengthened and lifted up and shine and shine and shine that others might see, boy, you look happy today. And we will say, it's not me. It is my King who lives within me. 
Can I show you or can I tell you how you can know him too? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You are worthy, O God. You are worthy, O God. You are worthy. Worthy of our praise and our worship. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen? That's what Christmas is all about, is rejoicing with the gift that's been given to us, but it's also letting other people know what I have I can give to you. Peter said at the man at the gate, beautiful, he says, silver and gold I don't have. said he was a beggar wanting some money. He said, but what I have, I give to you. What I have, I give to you. He didn't give him 10 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever. He didn't even have that. He said, but what I do have. Brothers and sisters, what you do have is Jesus in you. And he's wanting to get out. So sing praises to him. Worship him. And don't be afraid to proclaim Begin to proclaim what bubbles up in your spirit to bring glory to God. Amen? Hallelujah. Anybody happy in this place? Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Yes, Jesus, we praise you. We thank you, God. We give you the glory. Amen. Would you do just one more thing and we'll see you this next Sunday? Call somebody that's not here. I mean, Darlene Alvaro and fire off something with a Facebook or text message or whatever give somebody a phone call and say we miss you today we miss you let them know you care amen why don't you uh give a couple people a hug god bless you give those kids a big hug they did